three, two, one, action. Hello, Internet, and welcome to my latest video, and today, well, actually, it's more Beanie Bombs video. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great. Good, sir. How are you? I am doing fabulous. Awesome. Um, yes. Today, <laughs> we are doing a little interview process in which we are just going to tell each other, uh, like, some of our stuff of how we got started with YouTube. By the way, my name is Chef Matt Reviews, um, and, of course, this is Beanie Bomb. And uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a slight interview process, telling e like asking each other questions, how we got started with YouTube, what's our favorite movie, you know, all that sort of stuff. And uh, we'll be just going on with this process. Also, uh, if you want to help out today, uh, there is a link in the description for a Kickstarter campaign in which it is about my movie, They Rise, which is a zombie apocalypse movie. And uh, the end of the donation thing is on the 9th of August. So donate today, help support the project, and, you know, just all that sort of stuff. Yeah, do it. I did. You should, too. Yeah. And let's now get started with this little interview. Uh, all right, cool. All right. Uh, let's have uh, you start asking the questions first, Beanie. Sounds good. All right, so, Mr. Chef Matt Reviews, if I may call you that. Uh, um, <laughs> just go ahead and call me Matt, I guess. <laughs> all righty, Matt. Uh, so I guess the first thing I should ask is, um, what made you decide to start doing YouTube? Um, what really made me decide to do YouTube was, uh, you know, just watching these other guys do movie reviews, and I'm like, oh, I could probably do that. Plus, I really love movies, and, uh, you know, I just wanted to really get into it and everything, and I think the one YouTuber that really kind of helped me, uh, uh, just do what I really wanted to do was the nostalgia critic and He's Jer awesome. and Jeremy Johns and uh, you know just going on from that I uh, I just loved movies and everything and I wanted to really get into it and I've never been more passionate about movies than I am now since I started the YouTube channel that's great you know if you start a YouTube channel and it makes you more passionate about the thing that made you start it in the first place you know it's a good thing to continue doing yeah I and mean, ever since I was like uh ever since I could remember um like my the first movie I've ever watched since I could remember it was uh, Mary Poppins and a I classic. I still really love that movie today and uh yeah it it just really kind of shaped the person I am today yeah, it's an awesome movie. I used to watch it all the time when I was little. Yeah. It's really good. <laughs> yeah, I think everyone has watched it at least once when they were little. Hell, at, yeah. least, <laughs> at least three times. At least For three sure. times when they were little. All right, next question. All right. Um, well, I suppose now uh, I guess I should get into how I started YouTube, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, hear how you got started into YouTube. All righty, cool. So... Uh, I was always an internet dweller, or not always, but since, like, early 2000s, I'd say. Um, I used to go on albinoblacksheep.com before YouTube was a thing. Mm. Um, I forget what, when I first went on YouTube, but I know when I first started becoming, or, like, actively watching YouTube, uh, it was because I was really into Fallout New Vegas, <laughs> and so I uh, searched yeah. that on YouTube. Yeah. And uh, Toby Games came up, and he was the first YouTuber I ever watched. Uh, but he's not what inspired me, or who inspired me to do YouTube. The two main people um, were AK Spartan Killer and Matt G124. Mm. AK Spartan Killer does a gameplay commentary, one of the first to do a Happy Wheels series, and Matt G124 does like sketch vlog things, um, like sketch comedy. Yeah, kind of like that. Other random stuff, too. It's cool. <laughs> so, my first YouTube video ever actually isn't on my channel, because I didn't know what a copyright was. <laughs> <laughs> and it used that really bad song, uh, Look At Me Now. Oh, uh, yeah, me. yeah. Yeah, that one. That. Uh, and my cat, my big fat cat, uh, Cloud, he's actually a tuxedo cat, uh, he would eat paper, and... Um, my other cat, Starfighter, did not. So <laughs> yeah. I, I thought it kind of sounded like I'm eating instead of getting paper. So instead of 
doing a parody song because I didn't know what music was at that time. <laughs> uh, I just put the song over like a montage of my cats. It was it was a pretty good first video if I do say so myself, mm. but it got taken down. So my second video is the first video on my channel, which is Baller Cat. <laughs> yeah. Um, first video on my channel was a, uh, it was just kind of like an introduction thing. It's like just telling people, oh, okay, this is what the channel is about. And uh, yeah. I think the second video after that was a review of Grown Ups 2, in which, it, you know, it's <laughs> like I got, um, like, I was, like, so new to, like, reviewing movies and everything, and I was kind of, like, really dumb at the time getting into this, and I, uh, I was, I guess I must have had some sort of drunkenness about me when I saw Grown Ups 2, because for some reason I really loved it. <laughs> Well, how, how do you uh, view it now? I hate it. Ex okay. Extraordinarily hate it. It is awful. It's one of the worst comedies I've ever seen. <laughs> you must have watched it when you were really tired or something like that. Yes, yes. And, uh, you know, it's it's one of those films where I look back on it nowadays. It's like you just question why you laugh during it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, there's a few instances that happen like that to me. <laughs> Um, let's see, uh, next question. Let's... All right, next question. Um, let's talk about your movie and what you want to do with it. Uh, what I wanted to do with, uh, They Rise is, um, it's supposed to be a, uh, apocalyptic movie, it's supposed to be, like, a zombie-based movie, and, uh, what I wanted to do with it is it's gonna focus m mostly primarily on drama and character development and so on and so forth, more than it is actually the scares of, like, the zombies and everything. It's gonna have those elements in it, but it's more... It's more like The Walking Dead in that sense. It's uh, more focusing on the characters, character building, character development, their depth and storylines uh, more than it is really uh, zombies, even though it's just going to have the zombie scares in it. Sounds awesome. Yeah. And um, with the budget of like 20 grand, it's just one of those things where it's like, it's going to get me started. It's going to get me to the point of where it's like, I can get all these cameras. I can get uh, better editing software. I can probably do pretty decent visual effects if I learn how to do it. And, uh, you know, then I need set designers and actors and all, all that sort of stuff in order to make it as good as possible. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to to it and how how much you make on Kickstarter. So be sure to donate because if you don't, then we won't get this good movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on, guys. I really want to do this. Uh, my passion in life is to actually become uh, a film director and everything. I think one of the directors that really inspired me most. Well, there are like three directors that inspired me most when I was growing up, and um, uh, one of them. Well, all three of them are uh, Steven Spielberg, which I I have so many of his films that it's kind of hard to count them. <laughs> <laughs> um, the one the one film that from uh, Steven Spielberg that inspired me the most was probably E. T. the Extraterrestrial. Oh, E. T. Yes. Yeah. I was it, always afraid to watch it because um, my sister was afraid of aliens, and when she first watched it, she was really young, so she thought it was terrifying. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, looking back at that, that movie is extraordinary. I I remember when they re released it in 2002 for mm -hmm. its for its 20 year anniversary, and uh, we actually went to the theater and saw it. And the the fond memory I have of it is that we were in the front row, not even like at the oh, bottom, wow. not even at the bottom of the slanted staircase and everything. No, it was front row. Like I, w <laughs> I was literally at the point of where I was just leaning back as far as I could in the chair and pushing my neck up at the screen. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, the other two directors are Quentin Tarantino. Amazing. Which, uh, I have, like, Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs and, uh, Kill Bill franchise and everything. I have pretty much all of his films, uh, and I, I really love his directors. Uh, I really love his way of directing films and everything. I love the gore that he has in his films. Um, yeah. As as far as this film goes, uh, anyway, uh, is the screenplays that he has for him. His his screenplays are absolutely fantastic in his films, and uh, I think that's really why I got into writing and everything. Is um, mm -hmm. I really want to have that uh, naturalistic style writing that Quentin Tarantino has with his films. Yeah, 
Yeah, that'll be awesome to see. Because, like, a movie lover making a movie yeah. it's usually does, it usually turns out awesome. <laughs> However, sometimes it turns out like complete shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then my favorite director, as far as visual standpoint, would have to be Stanley Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick. Oh, man. Um, has made so many great films. Um, you may know some of his films like uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, uh, Clockwork mm-hmm. Orange, Full Metal mm-hmm. Jacket, and just so many I, other films. I've watched all of those, thankfully. <laughs> yeah. My favorite being 2001 A Space Odyssey uh, that from, was great. from his collection. It's actually in my top five favorite films of all time. It's, it is incredible, and uh, I can't wait to get it on Blu-ray soon. Yeah, man. Uh, speaking of top five favorite movies, let's talk about that. Ooh, yeah. Uh, we'll go, we'll go like back and forth on this. Um, yeah. Like I'll do number five, you do number five, and then so on. Yes. Sounds right. good. <laughs> number five, I'm going to have to say Mary Poppins. Uh, mostly because I grew up, it was one of the first films I ever watched as a kid. And, uh, the story is excellent. The acting is incredible. And I absolutely love Julie Andrews. Uh, her, her singing in this movie, she is absolutely the queen of musicals. And I also have her other movie, uh, The Sound of Music as a 50th anniversary Blu-ray. And, you know, I just love her performance in Mary Poppins as the title character. She was absolutely fantastic and I just love the movie. Awesome. Uh, so now for my number five, I know what my top three I know my top four. Are. Um, number five is either a tie between Kill Bill one and two because they're kind of like one movie. Yeah, and they're they're basically one big three hour movie, like three yeah, hour forty five minute movie. <laughs> yeah, uh, and probably like Fantasia because that was the first Ooh, movie that really good choice, introduced. Good choice. Yeah, uh, it was the first movie that really introduced me into the concept of like music and art, like actual art, art. Uh, yeah. like my Disney. dad's a painter and yeah. also a movie maker and actor and stuff like that. He was the original Marib and Aida. Uh, yeah. b- but that was the first time I ever really like understood art, uh, was Fantasia. Right. And, yeah. uh, yeah. So now time for your number four. Number four is going to have to be, uh, it's a Robert Zemeckis movie. It's, uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Oh, I love that movie so much. Uh, it is such a great movie, and uh, I, I'm so sad that Bob Hoskins is actually gone, and mm-hmm. uh, I, I really wanted to see more from him. It's uh, it's definitely one of my favorite films, and Robert Zemeckis, and it absolutely pushed the boundaries of visual effects at the time. It it still looks incredible today. So, yeah, yeah, for that's, sure. That's it's, my number it's, four. It's, that's yeah. my number four. What's your number four? My number four would have to be Django Unchained. Ooh, another Quentin Tarantino amazing movie. Yeah, he's yeah. actually my favorite director. But, ah, uh, that movie, ah, like, the characters are so connected to them. Uh Schultz is one of my yeah. all-time favorite characters ever. Uh, and the villain yeah. is yeah. likable. DiCaprio, and... DiCaprio, um... You know the scene in which he actually slammed his hand on the table and everything, has his hand was bleeding? Yeah, yeah, it was real. <laughs> it, it was real blood and everything. That's what I love it. And he never broke character during that scene. And that's mm-hmm. I love that scene. It's actually one of my favorite in film history. For and sure. I was so surprised he wasn't nominated in that movie. I know. What the heck, Oscar? <laughs> <laughs> um, number three. Number three is is going to have to be. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> This is actually a tough one. Um, Mm -hmm. hmm. Number three, Star Wars Episode V. Nice choice. Yeah, because not only is it one of the greatest sequels of all time, but it's Star Wars. It's Star (laughs) Wars. I grew up watching it, and it's such a good film all on its own, even if it wasn't a sequel. It's such a great movie. Yeah, it is. It. Yeah, man, that's the Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, it's like the Star Wars film to watch, other than yeah. the original Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. All right, number three. All right, uh, my number three, um, Hot Rod. <laughs> I nice. just love it so much because some of the jokes fall flat. Like two, I can remember, or they just not don't work and last too long. But other than that, it's kind of like a better version of Kung Pao. Uh, that really 
like that uh, kung fu movie parody movie. Yeah. Uh, that was ridiculous, but I feel like Hot Rod, it's just ridiculous enough. And the thing I love about it the most is that it just feels like a really long uh, Saturday Night Live digital short or like a YouTube video or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like a, a really big sketch on uh, SNL. Yeah, it's just, oh, I love it. It's great. Yeah. All right, number two. Number two for me is 2001 A Space Odyssey from Stanley Kubrick. Very nice. Absolutely incredible cinematography. I messed that up. Absolutely <laughs> incredible cinematography and uh, the visual effects in that even rivaled that of Star Wars, which came out 10 years after after yeah. the film came out. It came out in 68, and that film was so impressive to look at. And the visuals will always stick with me, especially like the monolith and uh, just uh, like going through space and everything. It's such an incredible film. Yeah, like the the zero gravity effects, back, especially back in that time. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> like it stands up to gravity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, my number two. Um, this is a hard one between number one and number two, and I guess I kind of like them equally, but for different reasons. Uh, and since I'm more into comedy, that's why the number one is what it is. But number two, Inside Out, um, the recently Ooh, yes. released. Yes. Yeah, such a great Pixar film. Uh, such a great Pixar film. It's the first mo- and only movie I get I've ever watched that actually like choked me up and made me teary. I haven't cried in a movie yet, but it's I've had like just, I've had like many different experiences. Two, uh, two that I can remember in which I actually legitimately cried in the theater. Uh, the first one was Marley and Me, and then it was Inside Out. Yeah, it's just. Uh, it's so good, and like not just for face value. The entire story is essentially a symbol uh, for like growing uh, up. Yeah, growing up and the depression that happens sometimes when the, when With the growing moving up does. from Minnesota to San Francisco. It yeah. Um, I remember I was like really sad when I moved from, and I'm still in the same town when I moved. But mm-hmm. I moved from this one like trailer I've been growing up in for the past nine years all the way to this new house and everything. I basically I just moved away from all my friends. All my yeah. friends were back there and everything. I was going through a lot of stress, but you know I just grew up and I got through it. Yeah, and, yeah, for sure. I used to move all the time because, as uh, aforementioned, I don't know if I'm using that word right, but uh, my dad was an actor and such. We had to move everywhere uh, from Canada to Broadway to. LA uh and I totally I not only connected with uh the she's not even really the main character if you think about it the main girl the main Uh, character is actually pretty much joy yeah but the thing that really hit me was the fact that like she closes off right yeah and she loses sadness and joy and they literally have to fight in order for them to be able to be expressed again and that happens when she and she gets the first memory with two. Th- ah, yeah. I won't spoil it, but it's, yeah, it's yeah. really good. Yeah. <laughs> Such a great movie. And my my number one favorite movie is also another recent movie. It's Martin Scorsese's The Wolf of Wall Street, which I unfortunately have not yet seen. Uh, it's such an incredible film. Uh, not only does it have its a lot of dramatic moments, but it also has so such a great amount of comedy in it it's it's one of the few films that i did not expect to laugh as hard in so many scenes that i saw in this movie plus um leonardo dicaprio's performance is just absolutely fantastic and i I, margot robbie is in the film and wow (laughs) nice yeah, yeah, good choice from what I've seen, uh, which isn't a lot. It's yeah. awesome. <laughs> I, I can't wait to see Margot Robbie's performance as Harley Quinn in Suicide Squad. Yeah, she looks awesome there. Yeah. All right. Have you heard... Before we get to my number one, have you heard of that fan theory about the Joker in Suicide yes, Squad? Yes, how, how he's <laughs> uh, actually... Um, uh, uh, Jason Todd. Yeah, yeah, that that'd be awesome. I think that would be <laughs> incredible. <laughs> that'd be insane. Okay, okay. Uh, now time for my number one movie of all time. In my opinion, it's incream, incremely. That isn't a word, Tyler. It's incredibly underrated. 
uh, in that movie is Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Yes. Um, oh, wasn't that movie directed by Edgar Wright? Uh, same guy who directed Hot Fuzz. Yes, yes. Um, I love I love the Cornetto trilogy. I love the Cornetto trilogy, and uh, like Edgar Wright was the director of those movies and everything. It, I love. I, I actually love Scott Pilgrim. Also, it's a great film. You know, he, um, Edgar Wright was originally supposed to do Ant Man. Yeah, yeah, I heard. How cool would that have been? That would have been awesome, but apparently he had some disagreements with the studio. Apparently he did not want it to be a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> but as Ant-Man, it kind of has to be. Yeah. Um, but overall, and I actually saw Ant-Man. It was it was a good film. Good film. I haven't seen it. Yeah, I, I recommend it. It's a good <laughs> film. Yeah, I should probably see it. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so... Uh, the reason why I think Scott Pilgrim vs. the World is the best movie ever, <laughs> or at least my favorite movie, arguably, there's movies that are more objectively, artistically better made, but um, it's just the sense of adventure it has is like the greatest out of every movie I've seen. And to me, that's the most important element out of anything. Like my favorite TV show, her cartoon is... Um, the Marvelous Misadventures of Flapjack. Because every episode, it feels like you just went on a journey. Yeah. And, like, there's character development. There's situations that arise and are solved. Yeah. There's conflicts. There's everything that it needs to be a great movie. And plus, it's also the only movie I've seen besides Hot Rod with the comedy of this generation. And the effects are awesome. And it's just, yeah. it's like video games, and comic books, and comedy and action. Over the top action at that. It's everything that I like. Yeah. So, yeah, that's why it's my number one. <laughs> yeah. And, um, all right. Uh, f- favorite TV show. Obviously, uh, you said uh, Marvelous Misadventures of Flapjack, which I actually do remember uh, watching mm-hmm. that uh, like a while back. I uh, I was actually a little surprised when it was canceled. Yeah, it it was. Um, I think it was canceled because Cartoon Network kind of has its waves. There's times when, it, at least lately, there's times when it's really great, and there's times when it's really bad. Yeah, and like, unfortunately, uh, Flapjack came at the end of that wave, and that wave included like Gumball. The- uh, or not Gumball, it's... Uh, Gumball came after, yeah. but the masterpiece, um, imagine, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Which yes! Yes, had, that show was so awesome. Yeah, it, amazing animation, amazing art, uh, all-star cast all around, directors and voice actors. Uh, it, it, I'm pretty sure it was nominated or got some awards. It was at least nominated for some, and it was canceled, yeah. too. And I think that's just because Cartoon Network thinks like hey whoa our channel's too good we gotta close this close it off boys yeah pretty much pretty much they just got rid of the, all the cartoons on cartoon network at this point <laughs> yeah basically i because uh, this is when they were also introducing the live action things on cartoon network and it's I cartoon understand- network damn it yeah cartoon network <laughs> those two words nothing about that name encompasses live yeah. action yeah, but- i understood when nick did it i understand that disney does it because they don't have the word cartoons and network in their name <laughs> yeah um my favorite TV show, my favorite TV show of all time, I will always stick by this, and mm-hmm. uh, it, it, I think it's because I, I really uh, grew up watching it, and I loved every single episode. It was Avatar The Last Airbender. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a really good show. Such an incredible show. Such great writing, great characters, and it just reminds me how much I hate the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! I've like, Remember the the teaser trailer for the movie with and, and nothing. Yes, yes. Was in I, the even, movie? I even put that in mo- my most recent review of the Last Airbender movie and everything. I I was so hyped when I saw that. Like I I went out and saw like the GI Joe movie, like uh, Rise mm-hmm. of Cobra and everything. And that oh, I that, that. Tra- that trailer came out. And I'm like, oh my God, this looks un- incredible. <laughs> And the whole trailer, where it's just that big scene and everything, where he is in the room of candles and everything, and it's just... Yeah. He slams mm-hmm. it, and they, then there's this big clip where, like, Fire Nation soldiers are climbing it, and then there's the big boats, and they yeah. shoot fireballs at the screen, and that wasn't even in the movie. <laughs> None of that was. <laughs> Remake the movie around that trailer. Seriously, yeah. that was the best part of the movie, and it wasn't even in the movie. <laughs> 
I don't get it either, because, like, I kind of feel like M. Night Shyamalan has, like, memory loss problems or something like that. Because he watched the show. He watched it with his kids, and he was like, yeah, this is great. And he liked it for the reasons why everyone else liked it. So when he was making the movie, I feel like the trailer with nothing that was actually in the movie was, like, his <laughs> original reaction to the show. And then, I don't know, like, as he saw the horrible actors, he kind of forgot what the show was. Or I don't know. But, yeah, his it was disappointing. Yeah. And um, <laughs> even before the movie came out, I'm like... Uh, like, with the additional advertising, I'm like, okay, this looks good, and then I, like, watch different YouTube videos about it, see what the production was going through and everything, and then I found out, uh, it's like, oh, there's no Kiyoshi Warriors in it, it's like, you don't have the Kiyoshi, they are an essential part of the plot, why do you not have the Kiyoshi Warriors in here? (laughs) Uh, might as well throw or Ang, or Ong, how they say in the movie, it's out like, as well. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it, how they pronounce certain characters' names. They pronounced them correctly in the show. <laughs> why do you pronounce them differently here? <laughs> and what was up with his arrow? And why did he look like he was like six? <laughs> and um, another thing is that um, with with the movie, it's like the arrow, the arrow and stuff like that, I I was questioning how they weren't going to make it look stupid, like just not have it be a big blue arrow on his head. And thankfully, they made it like symbols and stuff like that, so it made it look pretty realistic. Oh, you think so? I think it made it look a little more realistic than just a big blue arrow on his head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I think depending on the color, though, it could have worked. But yeah, yeah. N- now that I look at the yeah. symbols, did work. But I would have preferred the thing, uh, kind of like how the- uh, yeah. like. They did the opposite of what the Harry Potter movies did, because in the book, it was like he had a lightning scar, and you would expect an actual, like, scar tissue shaped like lightning, but yeah, it was just, but it was like just a, like a big, on. it was just a black indent, basically. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, some, oh, crap, we made the whole movie, and we forgot about the lightning thing. Yeah. Just quickly, draw it on. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Um, but yeah, yeah, it, they they did upgrade the makeups for the lightning scar and everything, so. Yeah, yeah. it got better throughout the movies. I was yeah. referring to the first one. <laughs> yeah. Um, but even with the first one, you couldn't really see it all the time because it was covered up by the hair. Yeah, the hair usually covers it up. So it's not a, but how cool would it have been if, like, the scar went, like, like past his, like, eyebrows a little bit? Yeah, yeah, that would have been a little cooler and everything. It would have kind of added something. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, cool. (laughs) I I still view Last Airbender as, like, the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. Oh, gosh. What was the worst movie I've ever seen in my life? There's... I I remember seeing... Oh! Oh, it was that one movie that looked really cool, but it was really bad, and it had Johnny Depp, and he was a vampire. Oh, oh, uh, Dark Shadows? Something like that, yeah. No, that was awful. <laughs> it was this is so boring. <laughs> uh, I think the main aspect of it I did not like was, um, you know, Johnny Depp is trying to get himself back out there. It's like, you do not need to be these, like, weird characters and everything. It's, it's really bad for your, <laughs> for your thing. And Dark Shadows, while decent, wasn't the thing that you need to get back out there as. Uh, which is why I'm looking forward to the movie Black Mass. Black Mass? Yeah, it looks incredible. Uh, look at the first trailer for it. Black Mass trailer one, and like put it in the watch later section. It is incredible. Mm-hmm. It's an incredible trailer. And, uh, I think it has, it's the second most viewed video on my channel, is my reaction to it. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'll, I'll check that out. Oh, uh, it's such a great trailer. And it, from the, performance that Depp is giving throughout the trailer, it looks mm-hmm. like he's going to win an Oscar. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's great. I feel like he has the acting shots to do it. Cause... Yeah, he was, uh, even for when his uh, when he did his performance for uh, Jack Sparrow, when he, mm-hmm. when he did it back in the first Pirates of the Caribbean, he was nominated for an Oscar. Yeah. He's my favorite character actor. There's uh, a lot of movies, actually, where I'm like, no way, that's Johnny Depp, because he can just change himself so much. Yeah, like like in 21 Jump Street, uh, he was he was one of the bikers. Yeah. Yeah, he was the one who always carried the peanut butter with him. 
I've only seen the 22. <laughs> I didn't even know there was a 21, actually. Yeah, I knew was... the TV show, but I thought the movie was just called 22. Like no, the sequel to the TV there was show. Uh, the 21 Jump Street movie, and then the sequel was 22 Jump Street. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I actually, about like Johnny Depp doing all these weird characters, uh, the, like he's trying. Uh, I, I remember Nostalgia Critic saying something about like back uh, earlier in his acting career, his characters were also varied and stuff, but now he's just trying so hard, and every character is like weird and wiggles their fingers. Yeah, his, same, uh, same with uh, uh, him and Helena Baham Carter. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it <laughs> almost seems like, uh, you know, it's like him, her, and Tim Burton are always doing like weird stuff together or something like that, and thankfully Tim Burton is getting into a, a good rut because uh, he did come out with a really good film recently. It was called Big Eyes. It was uh, based on a true story and everything. It was a great film. Uh, it had Amy Adams and Christoph Waltz. I gotta check that out. Okay. There's a lot of good movies that I haven't seen. <laughs> yeah. um, Alright, let's move on to a next question. Alright, next question. Hmm... Hmm. I guess. Uh, who's your favorite director and actor? Um, favorite director as of now. Um, favorite director would have to be Steven Spielberg. Mm hmm. And um, favorite actor. Well, he's an actor now. Director now. Um. Mm hmm. Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Um, he's acted in some films like um. Like, he did some early rom uh, romantic comedies with uh, Heath Ledger and stuff like that. And um, later on, like, he was in the movie Angels in the Outfield <laughs> as as the main kid character. Oh, yeah, I remember that movie. Yeah. I always... <laughs> so I used to watch Max Keeble's Big Move and Clock Stoppers on VHS. I remember those movies. I <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but in both of those movies, Angels in the Outfield was a, a trailer, and I always remember thinking, they're cheating. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it, it's such a good film and everything. It's such a feel-good movie, and uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt did great performance in that, and when I saw that movie, I'm like, this kid's going places. And sure enough, mm. he he directed his own film, which was Don John. Don John. Yes, I know of Don John. Yeah, he he directed and starred in that movie, and oh, cool. and he and he co-wrote that movie, and uh, wow, he did a great job with that film. <laughs> Don John. <laughs> I remember there are always billboards all over the place I live uh, at that time. Don John. There's like five and like two blocks. I don't know why. It's like the advertising department just put all of their advertising budget in that one city. <laughs> Yeah, it's it was such a great film and uh like it, it was definitely a good directorial debut for Joseph Gordon Levitt and yeah. uh I can't wait to see what other stuff he's going to be in. Yeah, sounds good, man. Yeah. Like he's right. he's going to be in this uh Robert Zemeckis movie called uh The Walk, which is about the the German dude who like tight roped his way yes, across that's the, right. across the Twin Towers. Yeah, I saw uh, trailers for that uh, yeah. when I saw uh, Inside Out and when I saw Mad Max, a.k.a. Furiosa, because Mad Max is like an extra... <laughs> Furiosa, Furiosa Road. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Furiosa Road, basically. Ugh. Why didn't they develop Mad Max? Yeah, he was begging he, it for was, it. It's still a good performance, though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Great movie. Yeah, it was undoubtedly a very good movie. Yeah. Um... <laughs> And uh, let's get maybe to, like, the last two questions. All right. Uh, before that, let me just say my favorite director and actor, though. Yeah. 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 Okay, director... Quentin, Quentin Tarantino. Tarantino. As I've said. An actor... I don't have one. Okay. <laughs> On to the last two questions now. Huh. What should I ask? There's been a lot discussed. How about you ask me a question? Well, um... Oh, God. If hold on, hold on. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is the point in the podcast known as a brain fart. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, okay, I have one. Let's go into uh, video games. Why not? Okay. All right. So, 
Uh, this is a question for both of us. What is your favorite video game? My favorite video game, um, as far as uh, from story to gameplay uh, to etc., mm-hmm. um, I'm going to have to go with, and this is recent, Grand Theft Auto V. Very uh, nice. It's an incredible game. I love the gameplay. I love the story. I absolutely oh, love the, the characters. No. Absolutely love the characters. And, uh, y- yeah, it's, I, it made me wish that there was a Grand Theft Auto movie at this point, And, yeah. and this should have been it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was worthy of a movie. It, it, I, I think I liked yeah. it so much because it was a movie you could play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it with uh, the story of Michael and everything, it felt fro- mm-hmm. it felt very much like the the Sopranos. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, felt like that for sure. Yeah, great, all great right. character arc and everything. All three characters are so likable. My my favorite one is Trevor, just for the <laughs> yeah. just for the sake in which um like he's so crazy and he's just so fun to play with. But as far mm-hmm. as like a uh, character that I feel more towards is uh Michael because you know he's kind of stuck in the past he he's mm-hmm. reminiscing about all these 80s and 90s movies and everything and I I don't know I just kind of had that emotional take with him and mm-hmm. um yeah 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 Michael's awesome and I can totally see why uh you'd relate to him the most cuz he reminds me a lot of you if yeah. you were a bank robber if I, <laughs> if I was a bitter old if I was a bitter 40-year-old man reminiscing on the past, I would be Michael. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, my favorite game, I have three, actually, on different aspects of it. Uh, but of all time, it's probably going to be Fallout 4, honestly, even though it's not out yet. <laughs> but my favorite game of all time, above all else, Bioshock Infinite. Ooh, great game. Great oh, so game. The, it's literally the prettiest game i have ever seen anywhere ever like yeah battlefield 4 you look realistic but the art Um, direction and art design of bioshock infinite is just so gorgeous and the character design is fantastic and the whole i'm really into this theme how it's like this dystopian world where religion is like ridiculous and um uh, that I won't spoil it because you got to play through the whole game yourself because it's like boom. But the science of the whole ending is awesome. Of the whole game, like I replayed it and I was like, oh. Uh, but just the combat, fantastic. The exploration, it encourages you to explore a lot. Uh, like I, I explored the crap out of the game. I think I spent like 50 hours in that game just like exploring and I still didn't find a power. Uh, yeah. So it's so it's great in that aspect. It's just overall amazing. Yeah. Um, other favorite games, I'd say, because they're on like the same level for me. Uh, Fallout Three, uh, because I it's it was my first ever RPG and my first ever open world game, and yeah. it was just mind blowing. It was incredible. The I've I've played over that game with like nine different characters, and I still haven't seen everything. I'm doing a playthrough on that right now i one episode and that was a month ago i gotta make another episode of that yeah uh, you better, yeah you better I'm for sure punch you oh god please don't ow i told you not to <laughs> <laughs> and uh the third game that i'd say is also my favorite and originally i like this more than fallout 3 but after all the milking of the series and the fact that you'd have to own like six consoles in order to play every game i kind of dropped in that's um kingdom hearts 2 oh such a good game oh yeah, yeah. the story i, I can't is... wait till kingdom hearts 3 comes out see how that yeah. is I wish it came out a bit earlier, because <laughs> yeah. I'm a PC uh, gamer now, and I don't plan on buying a PS4 anytime soon, or an Xbox yeah. One. I, I'd rather get a PS4 than an Xbox One, to be honest. Yeah, same. Uh, I think it's mostly because I really wanted to play the remastered edition of uh, Last of Us. Oh, yeah. That game is so great. Um that's gotta be my like second favorite game of all time. It just for the story aspect and everything. Mm-hmm. It's even after the like the first ten, fifteen minutes of the game, after the first mission and everything, I, I automatically got the feels. Yeah, it's crazy. I've just seen the beginning and not much else of the game. 
um it's like oh oh my god <laughs> um but yeah uh kingdom hearts 2 story because i i remember uh when i was little up until kind of recently because steam is really the only thing for pc gamers but i used to go to gamestop all the time and just kind of walk around for hours and just look at every single game for the playstation 2 they had and i was there with my sister and i pulled out this game, Kingdom Hearts, and I was like, hey, "Look at this! This looks stupid." <laughs> and it turned out to be one of the probably the best uh, RPGs of all time. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. And then Kingdom Hearts Two is my favorite because the character—it's uh, just so much better than Kingdom Hearts One. And Kingdom Hearts One was fantastic, so it tells you a lot about the game. Yeah. All right, now for the final question. The final question. Um, the question. <laughs> the getting harder to think of. <laughs> That's yes. all right. Okay, okay. I think I got one. I'm channeling my energy. Nope. Who would win in a fight? <laughs> Superman or Goku? <laughs> Goku! <laughs> Superman. <laughs> You think Superman? Uh, yeah. Um, I actually watched the recent death battle of it. Yeah. Uh, Superman same. versus Goku too. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. I and yeah, it's like I can acknowledge both these characters are great, but mm -hmm. overall, Superman would win. <laughs> I feel yeah. like Super. I want to say Superman would j win just because he's written to be the most powerful character out of every character. Like that's his point. Mm -hmm. Um, but. I, I feel like in a legit battle, if you took every single account of all the knowledge of everything, uh, Goku would win. Because I feel like... like Even in the death battle, they acknowledge, it's like, even if you did find the power to somehow beat him, you would have nothing left to aspire to, Goku. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like that would just happen. Because, like, I, um, they said in the end that... Superman is someone who has no limits to begin with, and Goku is a guy who conquers limits, but he can't conquer limits. If there's no limits, wrong! Superman has lost a ton of times to things. He's died! <laughs> so Goku <laughs> could, could win just by that, that aspect, that logic. But, I don't know. I just feel like Goku's stronger. Like, the things yeah. he's done is insane. Uh, well, technically, yeah. technically, Superman didn't die. He, he was put into a quote-unquote healing coma. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's true. I guess maybe, like, if they were fighting inside of the sun, then there'd be no chance for Goku. But I don't know. I just feel like Goku he, he would He would disintegrate. Just... <laughs> yeah. Uh, the things... Because I've watched Dragon Ball Z, and the things that he has withstanded... Miles ahead of anything Superman I've seen throw out. S Superman and... has survived... 18 supernovas to his face and he has gone through a red sun like yeah. through a red sun that think of it as getting like 4,000 nukes covered in fire thrown into your face but Goku early on in the series withstood like beams that could destroy like that could go through anything and just continue to he go was, through he was killed everything. he was killed by Piccolo <laughs> Uh, yeah, that that's really early on, <laughs> and one shotted by Raditz. But yeah. uh, the things that Goku would have withstand it, it seems like he could withstand more than Superman. And, and the things he's dished out he's seems a, stronger. And now uh, he's a Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan, which, yeah, uh, <laughs> which that is a mouthful to say. Why couldn't they just call it the Ultra Saiyan or something like that? I have yeah, no that idea. would have made more sense. Like the final Saiyan. <laughs> it's like Ultra Saiyan, Ultra yeah. Saiyan God One. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I don't um, know. I'm not okay. too into comics though, yeah. so to be honest, right. I haven't seen Superman's like ultimate comic thing. Yeah. Uh, I just know of his not just movies, but like his standard comic stuff. I know there's yeah. like stuff down the rabbit hole of comics where it's like, and the Hulk lifted the entire fabric of reality and crushed it with his yell. Uh, he he lifted the book of infinite pages. <laughs> Yeah, there's stuff like that in comics that make me think, maybe, he's probably, yeah, probably Superman wouldn't, I don't know, the things I've seen Goku do is like, what? <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. Alright, now let's get to the actual final question. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the final question? No, no, that was just a subject. <laughs> alright, alright, just like Dragon Ball Z, we've got filler. Okay. Yeah. 
and all that filler is with screams. Ah! Yeah! <laughs> all right, final question. Um, I'm thinking about origin stories, but I can't think of like a proper question like how were you born? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> um, okay, I guess just what are you doing now would probably be the best thing. What are you doing now? What do you plan on doing in the future? What's your life's plan? Uh, what I'm doing now is the same thing I've been doing since the start of my YouTube channel. I'm still doing movie reviews, and uh, I'm in the future, I hope to become a director. And uh, with, of course, the Kickstarter campaign I'm doing for They Rise, I'm hoping to have my film debut uh, on YouTube, I guess. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Th- this is this is a film I've been wanting to do actually for years. Um, yeah, in high school I was developing scripts for it, going back and forth on what storylines would be best, and I think I've gotten a storyline in which it would be best to do this storyline. And nice. uh, yeah, and I really think uh, this film will help me get somewhat of a career out of this. And yeah, uh, and I really hope it actually launches me into some new form of uh, media that I can really get into. Yeah, maybe I'm talking to the next great director. <laughs> You're looking at the next Kubrick, yeah, son. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but I guess, like, my life thing and what I'm doing now, right now, uh, YouTube, of course, but if you've noticed, lately I've just been uploading crappy kazoo music. Uh, <laughs> that's it's good. Kind of like I like it. I like it. It's good kazoo music. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, but that's just kind. Of, it takes a long time, actually. <laughs> but it's filler content. Uh, it it doesn't take as much time compared to uh, actual, actual gaming videos, videos because those take around six hours to edit for yeah. like a ten minute video. For, um, for me, it's so, like it's like an yeah. hour. Um, yeah, depending yeah. on how long I want the video to be, uh, it it may take like fifteen minutes uh, or so to actually uh, edit the video. To actually mm-hmm. make the video, it may take like five ten minutes, nineteen to twenty minutes at most, if I want it to be a really long video. Yeah, uh, yeah. For me, I usually record. Depending on the game, uh, I can record for like an hour. Uh, or like the, the less I record, the less time it takes for the video, but usually I record for around an hour. I don't know how that happens, but it happens. Uh, and editing, uh, editing itself takes like six hours with the style I edit in and when I put stuff in. Uh, but, um, so I'm halting that kind of with my crappy kazoo music, uh, because I'm working on, um, a game that's a secret that will happen soon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. I'm I'm working with Holder actually slash Major League Wobs. You probably know him. Um, he, he I don't know if he wants me to say this because it's a secret, but he, he's the uh, sound director and um, uh, producer. So yeah. he's music maybe co-writer. I don't know. Anyway, it's gonna be good. So, uh, and good. Hopefully, also, crossing your fingers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, uh, but the main thing that I'm working on now is animation because uh my dream like i've never said this but my legitimate actual dream in life uh would be to be a successful youtuber just doing what i do now but like as like an animation director or something uh, no just like gaming stuff um because it's i feel like it's such a good way to make people happy like if they're having a bad day or just even if they're just mi- minorly upset at anything, they just watch it and they forget about their minor upset. And to me, that's like the most important thing. And I also have the most fun out of anything I've ever done doing it. Yeah. It's just perfect. But I don't know. I've been on here for like over four years. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. But hey, maybe I don't want to be a pessimist. That's stupid. Uh, but in terms of like solid life goals, animation, I'm working on my portfolio to go to Lacuna College of Art and Design, which is the second best art college in the world second to cal arts uh yeah and uh hopefully i can get in there i think so i already took a port uh, couple classes there um uh yeah animation is cool i guess <laughs> <laughs> yeah um for me it's like um i'm going to college in november 
Um, it, it's going to be a culinary college and everything. It's like I love oh, nice. I, I love cooking, and uh, like that's the original field I wanted to go into before I started uh, YouTube. Um, but after this and everything, after I do college for culinary, I'm if I have enough money, I'll uh, I'll go into film school, uh, probably to some film school in California or something like that. Nice. And uh, really get my career started from that. Yeah, sounds like a good plan, man. Yeah. Alrighty, well, that's the end of the video, I guess. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for listening for, uh, like, 54 minutes or whatever it is now. Uh, 54, <laughs> 54 minutes, I think. 53 on the actual, like, uh, like audio and thing. Yeah, probably. I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you for listening uh, so much. I don't know what will be in the background. Probably just to picture... Uh, because I don't have yeah. any hour-long gameplay. <laughs> yeah, I I feel like we should actually, um, they like, uh, do like our actual pictures from the profile on here, <laughs> or something. Yeah, <laughs> probably. I don't know. Uh, I'll make something. I'll, I'll send you like a link of the picture I have in here. Uh, yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know, which you probably do, since it's on the screen right now, it's a beautiful. Uh, episode five, I believe, Star it's episode Wars. Episode four, episode four, four poster. Four, my bad, my bad. Uh, Star Wars poster with a Matt's face. Oh, for Luke Luke's. Skywalker. <laughs> so it's great. Yeah. Um, um so, yeah, yeah. So thanks for watching. Any final thoughts? Um, please uh, donate today to the Kickstarter down below in the description, and uh, please help us get this movie uh, off the ground and help, like, actually make it a reality. Yeah, definitely. Also, be sure to subscribe to Chief Matt Reviews. He will be linked in the description. Chef Matt, uh, damn it. Chef Matt. Do I keep saying Chief? I don't know why I think there's an I in there. Brain, excuse me. Knock, knock. Yes, hello, Tyler? Do you see an I there? I'm sorry, <laughs> don't get mad at me. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, this outro has gone on long enough. Yes. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.